Thank you for coming. This is the UTRGV SADA Summer Training Series. Today, we are going to be covering in an hour, we're going to be covering um, dragon fruit production with a little bit of discussion of, of trellising. Um, as always, we have our, our trusted uh, specialist, Cruz Salinas, who is going to be presenting. Our last series, which, which happened, I think, back in July, um, all three of those trainings are currently on our, on our SADA YouTube page, um, and that's where they'll, they'll live in perpetuity. We're going to have this presentation this week and then another one next Tuesday. Again, next Tuesday, it's going to be on a specific construction of a specific trellis for producing dragon fruit and also on, on preparing for the fall vegetable um, growing season. Um, so I think it's time for us to really get, get kicked off here. I'm going to like to introduce our, uh, our featured presenter today, uh, Cruz Salinas. Cruz Salinas is an agricultural specialist here at UTRGV. Um, he was a farm worker until the age of 17. And then after that, he, he, he worked in the agricultural uh, equipment uh, uh, industry for over 30 years. Um, subsequently, he, was, he, he worked for USDA at the Kika de la Garza Research Center, Research Center for seven years. And then since 2012, he's been with the university, University of uh, Texas Rio Grande Valley, uh, as an agricultural specialist where he helps clients with a number of things, especially crop production, uh, certain types of equipment, season extension equipment, um, in terms of, uh, of uh, high tunnels, caterpillar tunnels, all sorts of stuff. So Cruz has an enormous amount of experience, both as a, as a, as a commercial farmer, because he also owns Salinas Family Farm, where he produces amazing, he produces dragon fruit, tomatoes, a number of things, um, but also as, a, as an extensionist, as a, as a technical assistance provider. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to you, Cruz. Uh, please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Colin. As uh, he mentioned, uh, I, I am a, a farmer. I've, I've been uh, farming, uh, a small acreage farmer, uh, for quite a few years now. I, I've dabbled in this and that uh, sort of niche crops, uh, one of them being uh, dragon fruit, uh, which uh, we'll be talking about today. Uh, this uh, particular screen uh, that you're seeing at the moment is, is, at, my, is at my place. Uh, it was uh, planted uh, in May of uh, 2017. And uh, at the end of this presentation, I, I have this picture again, and we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in, in detail. So we'll begin with our presentation. Uh, this presentation uh, will include uh, the, the different options of using uh, trellis posts. Uh, we'll discuss on how to plant uh, the dragon fruit. Uh, We'll also be uh, showing uh, the trellising and, and the pruning of dragon fruit plants uh, throughout uh, the stages uh, of its growth period. Actually, it's uh, kind of very simple to, to start up uh, uh, dragon fruit uh, productions as far as uh, tools and, and materials is, is required, uh, all depending on uh, which, which route you go. Uh, in this particular scenario, uh, we will be using a, a cement uh, trellis, which uh, we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, the tools that uh, are required uh, to get uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, workshop started uh, is uh, simple tools. Uh, we're going to have your post hole digger. We have the, a shovel, uh, some string, a, a sharp knife, uh, some pruning shears. And something that I left out in this picture is a, a few pieces of, uh, of, of wire. The other materials that, that are gonna be required uh, for this particular application is, is gonna be the uh, four by four uh, cement post, uh, which uh, I actually uh, have at my home, uh, at my farm where I am growing my pitaya and a, a tire. Uh, uh, this, this particular tire is a pickup tire and that's what I recommend uh, for the volume and, and, and of course the, the width uh, for the root system, uh, which we'll talk about here in, in a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, we will be uh, planting our, our dragon fruit in that uh, far left uh, cement uh, post, but the, you have other options. Uh, and, and I'll discuss a little bit about them later on here uh, during the presentation. Uh, you can use a cedar post, uh, 
You can use a four by four uh, treated lumber or untreated lumber. Uh, you can use uh, metal posts. You can you can use PVC pipe. Uh, and personally, I've I've worked with with all of them, and uh, I just decided that the best route uh, for me to go uh, commercially uh, would be with uh, the cement post. Uh, for the fact of the matter is that. The, the plant, I mean, it, it, it just lives forever. It's, it's kind of, at this point, has been hard to kill. Uh, it, it's actually been through, uh, you know, we planted in May of, of 2017, uh, and uh, it was going real nice. Uh, we had it uh, almost uh, four feet, five feet uh, in, in growth period. And if you all remember, <laughs> we got that snow in, in, in December of 2017 which uh, sort of kind of, uh, it didn't wipe it out, but it did uh, uh, literally uh, stop the growth. Uh, it it uh, froze the top part, but the bottom part uh, didn't freeze, so it came back out. And um, once again, in 2018, we had another freeze. So, uh, but it, it's a self-sustaining plant. It is a plant, the subtropical plant. And uh, uh, we are in a sub uh, zone nine. Uh, we have the right conditions uh, for, for growing the, the dragon fruit. So uh, needless to say, the, the plant lasts a very, very long time. And by using the, the cement posts, I don't have to worry about it rotting. And that's, that's the purpose behind that. Uh, uh, the, cedar, the cedar posts last quite a bit long time, but it does rot. And of course your treated lumber does last a long time, but it, it, it rots also within, you know, seven, eight years. And, and the plant lasts, lasts a lot longer than that. Some of the plant-based options, uh, uh, they're just a lot numerous to mention. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just gonna men mention a few. You can go straight in ground, which you know you don't have any base whatsoever. Uh, you can uh, you can use a a, a two foot uh, square frame uh, that is there in the center, or you can use uh, a, a a tire, which I'll be showing you here in just a little bit. And of course, you can also use a pot. You know, when when you do use a pot, uh, it has to be at least uh, the personal experience and some of my clients that I've talked to, uh, I would really, really strongly recommend that it be no less than a 20 gallon pot. Uh, uh, for the fact of the matter that the, the pitaya plant has a very, very big root system and you will be seeing that here in, in, in just a little bit. Um, in, in using a, the, the tire, you have to prepare the tire uh, in order for for you to be able to have an area for the for the root system to grow and to be able to breathe. Uh, uh, it, it seems like uh, something that's very very hard to do and maybe complicated uh, to cut out a, a a the top or the side the sidewall off a off a tire, but oddly enough. Uh, just with a real simple, heavy-duty uh, sharp knife, uh, you can actually cut out uh, both seams in in about a minute. It it it's it's very very easy. Uh, the side wall uh, is 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 just rubber. If it doesn't have any of that uh, those wire strands in it uh, to to make it difficult to cut, you know you don't need. I mean, you could use an electric saw. You could use a a power saw or or a sawzall and stuff like that, but I mean, I mean, you can use it, uh, cut it uh, with just a simple sharp knife. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I did it. And basically, you just just uh, you go to the to the sidewall, um, and most tires have this little uh, edge right here where where the this part is 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 meets this part, and and that's your weakest point right there. So you just Put the knife in the sidewall, and you literally just start just start cutting it like you would cut anything else. 
And it, it seems like it's, it, it's hard, but it, it's, it's really not. Like I said earlier, it, it, it takes about 30 seconds, uh, 45 seconds uh, to, to, to cut out the side of a tire. Uh, you're going to cut both sides out uh, of your tire and one you're going to dispose of and, and the other one we're going to be using it uh, as, as, as the top of, of the trellis. So sa save at least one, one piece of it. Of course you're going to dig your hole. Uh, I would not have the hole any less uh, less than two feet. Uh, the, the weight of the, of the dragon fruit plant at its maturity can weigh almost 200 pounds. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, I'm going only two feet, but when I put the tire and then I add uh, the compost mix, uh, that's another 10 inches. So, you know, you're looking at probably uh, 34, 36 inches of, of, of uh, actual dirt that'll be holding the, the, the cement post in place. As I mentioned earlier, one of the options that, that, that you can use is, is, is a, a four by four uh, post, which could be treated or untreated, all depending if you wanna go organic or conventional. And it's very simple. Uh, all you need is, is, is a drill, a, a bit, a, a 3 8 wood bit. Uh, you're gonna need two pieces of, of rebar. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm using 24 inches uh, in length. Uh, then, uh, uh, I mean, I just wanna clarify something on the four by four post. It's not actually four by four, it's three and a half by three and a half, but uh, they're called four by fours. So, uh, uh, a lot of people uh, think that when you buy a four by four, it's actually four inches by four inches, but it's not. And what, what you want to do is, is, is you're going to go on one side and you're going to go down one inch and go in the center and, and drill the hole through. Okay. Then you're going to go on, on the other side of your, of your post, but now you're going to go an inch and a half inches down, okay? And you're gonna drill that hole uh, all the way through. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your rebars uh, on the one inch hole and then the inch and a half hole uh, all the way to where they're centered. And, that, and that's, Basically, that's basically it. Uh, what you're gonna do with the with a cedar post is the same thing. What you're gonna do with a PVC pipe is the same thing. But with the um, cement post, it's a little bit different because the actual rebars are already inside the, the, the cement post, which you're gonna see here in just a little bit. Now back to where we were with your, your two foot uh, deep hole that we had dug. Just put your post in, uh, pack it in real nice. Uh, very, very important that you pack it in uh, with a rod or something because uh, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna have a lot of weight once that uh, plant matures. Uh, when you get ready to plant, uh, uh, a good tip is when you get your, uh, your dragon fruit plant, uh, it, it's, it's shaped, if you cut it sideways, this is what you're gonna see uh, as far as the, the shape is, is concerned. Uh, it looks like a triangle, but it does have one flat side, okay? Um, I've uh, planted different uh, varieties of, of uh, dragon fruit, and uh, they all have this, this shape, real similar to this shape, and they have one side, flat side. That flat side is the one that you're gonna want to go up against uh, whatever you're, you're using with, whether it's a cement post, uh, the cedar, plastic PVC pipe, or, or so forth, so on. So remember that. And, and the reason for that is that uh, under certain conditions, uh, 
A lot of them uh, would be uh, uh, when, when it's dry, uh, the, this particular type of uh, cactus plant, it is in the cactus family, uh, it, it tends to shoot out some roots uh, and it, it'll shoot them from the flat side. And basically what it is, it, it's trying to gather some, some more moisture from the air because that's, that's where it takes some of the moisture. But th those root systems which are up in the air are also the type of root systems that grab onto the pole and it actually helps hold that plant to whatever uh, post uh, you're using. So uh, if, 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 if when you're planting, make sure that flat side is up against the post. When, when you get ready to plant, uh, whether you have uh, <clears throat> cuttings or where, where, when you purchase them, uh, I recommend that uh, you leave them at least minimal, uh, three to four days uh, if, if you cut them from one of your plants or you went and purchased them and they had just cut them. And, and that, for that reason, it's for the, for the, it was cut for it to heal. Because if you plant it right away, there's a possibility that uh, the disease uh, that you may have in the ground or whatever may go in through that, that, uh, that portion that has, that has been cut. And uh, you don't have to plant it too deep. Uh, the, the deepest that, that you need to go is actually two inches uh, uh, into, the, into the ground. Uh, earlier I had mentioned uh, the, the, the planting options of, of using uh, uh, either a pot or uh, a, a, a wooden frame. In this case, uh, uh, I'm, I'm showing a wooden frame on, on how it would be set up. And here basically I used, it was a two by eight uh, board, uh, which I cut uh, 24 inches uh, in length, uh, just uh, screwed them together. And uh, I feel, filled the, uh, the, the frame with a mixture of 50% compost and 50% uh, topsoil. Um, normally on, on, on all the mix that, that I use, I purchase uh, at the McAllen Recycle Center. Uh, the, the, they've got it already mixed for you. All you gotta do is back up, load, they'll load your pickup, they'll load your trailer uh, with, with this mix. And I've used it for, for, for my asparagus I've used it for all my raised bed gardens and it, it's a very, very good, very good mix. And it's got enough uh, fertilizers and stuff to get the, your, your dragon fruit started and growing. Back uh, to, the, to the tire. Uh, basically here it is where we had cut it out. Uh, at this point, you know, you drop it, you drop the tire from the top uh, and you center it on your post. Then uh, you fill it up again with your 50% uh, topsoil and 50% compost mix. Here you'll see uh, once again where the dragon fruit is, uh, is, has been planted. Uh, it was planted uh, two inches deep and you can do this if if, if you would like, personally, uh, uh, I, I do it myself, is I plant one plant or one stem on each side of, of the post. Uh, that's what research has, has recommended and that's, that's what I've done. The only thing that can set you back on this is if you are growing this commercially and you are having to purchase your, your stem, your, your cuttings, and if you go for proposed, uh, it, it might get a little expensive. Uh, some of these cuttings uh, can run up to uh, $15, $20 a piece. So if, if that would be the case that you're planting a whole bunch of them, then, you know, I guess I would start with one. But, you know, I would probably minimal of two. That way, if something happens, you'll have at least uh, one of them, you know, survive and, and growing on your, on your post. And, and always remember to put the flat side up against your post. 
As far as uh, the top of this post is concerned, uh, you have the rebars coming in uh, that were part of the, the cement post uh, when it was built. Uh, you're gonna bend your, once, once you get your tire in, then you're gonna bend your, your rebar forming a, a triangle, okay? And I'm not going to go too much into this the cement post because next week uh, I do have a presentation where I'm actually going to show you how to build uh, or construct uh, this uh, cement uh, post. Uh, it's very very simple. Seems hard, but it's but it's not. So uh, next week, if y'all would like, uh, join us and uh, I will show you how, step by step on on how to build that uh, cement post. You're gonna place one of the cutout tires up on top. With your sharp knife, you're gonna cut some a little slot on, on, on top of the actual bead of the tire. And then you're just gonna actually slip the wire through and, and, tie, and tie it together or tie it down with some pliers. It is very, very important that, that you use wire and, and, and not rope or, or a string or something, because you, you want this to be permanent. You, I mean, this is gonna stay on here for 10, 15, possibly 20 years, uh, as long as your plant is alive. Uh, right now, some of my plants are already seven years old and uh, uh, the posts are in, in real good shape. And uh, this uh, rubber tire, of course, is, is not going anywhere. But it, there's a lot of weight that uh, this tire and these rebars hold up. So it needs to be uh, tied down with, with the wire. Once all that is done, uh, we're, we're ready to, to, to plant uh, our, our dragon fruit uh, and, and watch it grow. Here on, on, on the left uh, side of the screen, we have the, the, the dragon fruit. It, it's already grown. Uh, 24 inches. Uh, at this point, you want to start tying it down. It, it's very, very important that that you tie it down. The fact of the matter is that it gets top heavy. It may lean over and it may start growing in, in the wrong direction you don't want. Uh, you want the, the actual stem to be going straight up that side of that pole. Uh, each one, you know, growing in the same direction, okay? And by doing so, uh, you, you just have to tie it down. Uh, at one point in time, you will see some of the, the, the roots uh, growing uh, from, from the side and attaching to them. But uh, with the strong winds that we have, uh, it takes quite a bit of, 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 of force and it, it literally pushes pushes them out and it takes time for it to, for them to really attach. So by tying them down, uh, that will solve that problem. As, as the plant is growing, at this point, it's almost three feet, three feet tall. Uh, you just have to be, you know, keeping it straight, keeping it tight uh, as, as it's growing. At this point, uh, the, the dragon fruit has uh, reached uh, the, the top uh, uh, of the tire. And here is, is the, the last point where you're gonna be tying it at. And you wanna make absolutely positively sure that your, your dragon fruit is growing through the center of, of that tire. That way when it goes through, then it starts uh, umbrelling out. Uh, that throughout this entire stage, you will have some shoots that, that tend to come out on the sides of, of, uh, of these plants. Okay, there's another one that wants to come out or it's already been pruned out. It's, it's very, very important that you have this main stem growing without any shoots. I left this one on purpose so that uh, I could explain to you one of the two things that, that'll be done to it. Uh, the reason for that is if, if you have no other stems 
uh, growing on the actual uh, uh, or any shoots growing on the main stem, it's going to go real fast and it's going to get to the point where you want it to where then you will let it grow other shoots. At this point, what happens is it'll stun the growth of your main stem and it'll start feeding energy into the shoot that's going out the side and then it'll take forever for that plant to grow. And then what might happen is this, this one may become the main stem and you don't have it tied down and it's going to start uh, uh, knocking this one down. So uh, the reason I left this is so that y'all could see the stems coming out. Now, if, and if you're in production and commercially and you're trying to increase uh, the, the, the plant uh, uh, on, at, your, at your place, one of the things that, that you would want to do at this stage is maybe let one or two grow out at the most. And when they get at this stage, 12 inches or more, you can cut your shoot. And actually now you have another stem that you can plant. Uh, let's say you only had had uh, planted two in this particular post, then you can just cut that one and now you can plant that one uh, on your on this side and then you would have three and then you if you had the other one over here then you would plant it on the other side and you would have four so uh, that's that's sometimes that that's that's what I do when when I, I can't get enough of a, a certain variety or you know uh, they're kind of expensive I said well I'll just grow some for six months and whatever and then I'll cut one of the stems And basically, you just get some pruning shears. Uh, you, you cut it right at, at the base uh, of your shoot. And like I said, at, at this point, this is uh, uh, large enough where you can literally plant it and start another, another plant. I'm going to go back to here. Uh, one of the reasons that, that I used a tire is is weed control. Uh, uh, these do not like to to just like asparagus is one of my other niche crops. They don't like weeds growing in here. And you know, one, I don't like to mow the grass. <laughs> I don't like to weed eat. So the lesser space I have that I can that I need to weed out, the better. And that's probably one of the main reasons why I used a tire. Because in this outer area, which you'll see here in just a little bit, uh, I go ahead and mow with a tractor and I hit the edges with a weed eater and I can go real fast. I can do that plot that I have uh, probably in, in 30 minutes or less. And then basically the only thing that I have to come in and, and, and weed out by hand is this little area in here. Now, the reason I mentioned earlier that I used a, a two by eight by 10 is because uh, at, at, I played with a two by four, a two by six and a two by eight. And, and this tire being eight inches, uh, the root system for this uh, dragon fruit is very, very shallow. So it will, the root system will literally cover this up in, in no time whatsoever. But yet the height of this uh, tire or the two by four by eight is, 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 is not tall enough that it won't allow the root system to go under and start to grow around uh, in this area. Now in this area, it is grassy. And at, at this point through my personal experience, uh, it, it, the plant tolerates the grass in this area. It doesn't harm the plant uh, whatsoever, but this is a this is the area that I want to keep weed free, uh, and the, the only way that I can do it is by hand. Here I have a, a plant that I had growing uh, in uh, in a fence line, and uh, I grabbed some stems and I threw them on the fence line. And uh, just to just to see for the growth and see how they grew and so forth and so on, uh, the actual root system of this 
plant was literally pulled out by hand. It was only like two inches deep. Uh, the, the, the fence had a whole bunch of uh, compost from the dead leaves from my oak trees uh, that, that we put on the edge of the fence uh, for weed control. And I literally pulled it out with my hand. The actual plant uh, was six feet tall uh, and had about 10, uh, uh, six feet wide uh, uh, leaves coming out of it. So the, the plant was, you know, humongous, but I took it out so that I could show you all the root system of, of the dragon fruit plant. And, and basically on, and, and with this root system, this, this much right here would be inside the tire, literally all spread out. And this root system uh, goes under the tire and, and in, into the, the other area. So uh, after a while, uh, this is what your dragon, dragon uh, fruit plant uh, should look like. Uh, the, uh, there's no stems, no shoots uh, growing from your main stems other than your main ones. And once it gets to this point, uh, you will start seeing a whole bunch of shoots coming out of the tips of, of, of these, uh, of the main stem, and you wanna let those grow out. As, as they're growing, uh, you wanna manually uh, space them out. And uh, the reason for that is you're gonna have a lot of growth. And two, when it does start putting out your flowers and your fruit, uh, one, it makes it easy to harvest uh, your, your dragon fruit. And, and two, uh, these, uh, of course, uh, like cactus, these do have thorns and it just makes it easy on you where, you know, you're not scratching yourself the whole time uh, during harvest, okay? Uh, this is probably about a year and a half's uh, growth. And uh, you'll see here in just a little bit, I think I have a picture where it, it's mature and it, it's literally all covered up. That's just the bottom picture of it. You can see all the, all the stems coming out of the, the at this point and, and then umbrelling out. When you plant your dragon fruit, your dragon fruit plant, uh, it takes anywhere from 12 to 18 months uh, before you see your 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 first bloom. Then once you see a bloom, then then after that, uh, it takes anywhere from 40 uh, to 50 days for you to actually have uh, uh, your dragon fruit that's mature and and, and ready to eat. Uh, this particular plant uh, I planted on on a cedar on a cedar post, and I never pruned it. I never pruned the bottom stems. Uh, I've tried growing on cedar posts. I've tried uh, the the four by four uh, a treated lumber. I've I've planted on a a straight uh, uh, fence line using a King Ranch wire. I've planted on. Uh, on the cattle panels, which are you know, four by four uh, squares, uh, just you know, playing with a with a whole bunch of different scenarios to see uh, which which would be more uh, practical for me uh, commercially. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if if you don't prune these plants, and it's it's really time consuming, and you have to do it pretty often, uh, this this is what can happen. Uh, your 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 plant literally becomes a bush. And if you have fruit growing in here, it's very, very hard to harvest. Uh, if it's growing under one of your, your stems, uh, it actually crushes the fruit. Uh, so this is kind of uh, let go. And it was for, for that reason to see what it would look like uh, at, at the end. Now, once the, like I said, 40 days uh, to 50 days, uh, then you have your, your actual fruit. And uh, if none of y'all have tasted or eaten a dragon fruit, uh, taste is kind of hard to explain it. It's just super delicious. This is the actual plot that I have at, at my farm. And uh, 
it's it's 44 posts uh, the area is 50 feet wide and it's 110 feet long uh, uh, like I said, it was planted in, in, in May of 2017. Uh, since then, uh, we've had two setbacks. We've had the, when it snowed, set back the plants almost to the bottom, you know, froze them all, all the top off. Then we had the heart freeze last year. Uh, once again, uh, it, uh, it set them almost to like this, the a foot almost, uh, didn't kill it. Uh, I mean, they, they, they came, they came out. And this is a current picture of, of the way it looks now. This is from last year to this year, okay? We did harvest a few fruit uh, this year from, from, the, from, uh, from these plants. Um, as far as the varieties that I have, uh, these first three rows are, are red fruit and, uh, or the color on the inside is red. And this particular row is is white is a white fruit. Um, as as far as the the varieties uh, are concerned, uh, there are a whole bunch of varieties. Uh, uh, what you plant is almost deter, uh, determines what you can get your hands on and the availability. Uh, the some of the varieties are are in this case that I have here are physical graffiti. Uh, Haley's uh, Haley's Comet, and uh, this is the Vietnamese White, uh, but but that's what was available when 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 I, when I decided to to plant this. Uh, uh, the uh, there's a whole bunch of varieties that are red in color when you cut it. They're white. Uh, uh, there's pink. Uh, there's purple. Uh, uh, their, their, the outside colors also vary. Uh, your, your yellows, you have your, your yellow peel, your, your purplish peel, your reddish peel, and some that's a greenish reddish. So it just all depends on the variety that, that, that you get is what determines uh, the color that's in the inside and the taste. Uh, some people say or, or research has said that the, the purple or the reddish are the, are the sweetest. Uh, they have the higher uh, sugar brick uh, content. Uh, but I've had some clients that prefer the white uh, dragon fruit over the red dragon fruit for whatever reason. As far as uh, these varieties, uh, the, all the varieties have thorns on the plants, but the dragon fruit does not have any thorns. You can literally just grab them with your hand and, and take them off. It's not like your regular cactus uh, prickly pear that has, that has thorns on them. Uh, there is one thornless variety though. Uh, believe it or not, it's called Sinespinas. And uh, if you translate it to English, it's without thorns. Uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of that. I've, I've, I've wanted, been wanting to get some for three years and I, and I can't get it, the availability. You almost have to get in line and, 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 and wait for, for a long time before you get it. Uh, as far as the drip irrigation or, or the irrigation is concerned, in this particular plot, I'm irrigating through the top. Uh, you can see this black hose that is running through the top of, of all, my, uh, all my posts. And the reason for that is one, I did not want to bury the, the line because I didn't want it coming out and I wanted to be able to weed eat or weed control with a weed eater uh, all around the tires. So I basically put it on top and here on top I have a, a one eighth line that drops down with a, what they call a, a pencil dripper and it's just stuck in, in, in inside uh, this area and that's how I water the the uh, the uh, my plants. Uh, the water con uh, that uh, availability that I have for this is through a faucet. Um, I try to water an inch. What's what? What I would say an, an inch of water rainfall a week. Uh, uh, sometimes I'll go two weeks. Uh, I do have them set on a timer. Uh, I mean that would be almost equivalent in this little area right here would be uh, two gallons of, of water a week. Uh, that's, that's what it would be equivalent to. Uh, 
as far as diseases are concerned, uh, just like any plant out there in this world, uh, they are prone to disease. Uh, I've yet to lose any of my plants to disease or whatever. They're, they're, they're pretty hardy, but uh, uh, there, there are some, uh, you know, anthracnose, uh, there are some fungicides, there are some nematodes that might hurt your plants, but I really haven't had any problems at this point. Uh, as far as uh, sun is concerned, I have all of these in full sun. These are tropical plants. So basically they need at least six hours uh, of, of sun and they will tolerate, uh, you know, shady areas. As a matter of fact, these plants are, that are close to my oak trees or actually now they're under my oak trees, uh, are sometimes look a little bit better than these that are out in full sun. Uh, they will get sunburn over the past uh, few years, on, on especially this time of the year. You'll come and see, you'll, if you see my, my plants, they're sort of like yellowish uh, in color where the, the intense heat the, and too much sun, actually sun burns them, but they, they come out of it. Uh, I, I've yet to lose a, a plant, you know, entirely. Uh, due to to the sun, but uh, being a subtropical plant, of course, you know, the, in a shady area, they they'll do just fine. I know we're running uh, short on time. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, leave the next few minutes uh, for any any questions that we have, uh, Colin. All right, Cruz, thank you so much. That was fantastic. That's really good, really good content. And there was a, there was a portion there, um, you were talking about the fruit itself and you were talking about how sort of special, I mean, this is, this is a, a, a tropical fruit. It's a fruit that only grows in, a really, in, in, a, in only a few areas of the United States and South Texas and the Valley in particular is, is one of them. Um, but it's amazing. I mean, I know for myself, uh, going to local restaurants, a lot of the restaurants around here like to source local pitaya or dragon fruit to make cocktails with. That seems like a really good use, but it's, it's sort of similar to, a, um, to like a kiwi, right? In terms of texture and maybe flavor. Yes, uh, very, very similar, but tastes quite a bit different. It does. It's, 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 it's not as quite as pungently sweet. And uh, yeah, texturally, it's got, it's got those seeds in it, but it's, it's very unique and really special. I know for myself, I like to, to, to add it to some like salsas and to some, uh, you know, to, to sort of mix it with some other fruit. Um, it holds its shape very well. Um, and it, I think it does, and it holds up well in those, in those preparations. Um, so we have a bunch of questions coming in here, which is really exciting. Um, so for everyone who, who, who uh, joined a little bit late, make sure to, to ask your questions in the Q&A function here. Um, and we're gonna do our best to, to, to make sure that we cover all these questions before the end. In the meantime, I'm going to, um, to start our polling here. I'm gonna launch the poll, which is asking some of the participants here um, what, what, what people plan to do with that information. And feel free as, as the Q&A uh, session sort of rolls along to fill this out and, and complete it. So I'm gonna launch it right now. Um, so uh, Cruz, first question, let me find it here, from, uh, from Roxana Moore. Um, we have a question about where, where can one in the valley, like in South Texas, in the valley, where can you purchase or, or find dragon fruit cuttings? They're, they're very limited. Uh, there's just, a, actually, besides me, there's just a couple of growers that uh, have uh, access to plants that I think you're able to purchase. If you can contact me, I can, I can contact both individuals, they, they're both in, in the, in the, in the uh, production mode to where I, I think they wanna establish their, their, their plots before they actually start selling. So uh, if they would contact me, I can contact them and, and then pass the information over. But as far as uh, purchasing them, uh, if you go to your internet, uh, Google, uh, you're able to order them online, uh, um uh, from uh, i guess there's places in florida uh there's places in california that have an abundance of, of the actual uh cuttings all right thank you we had a few questions here on the on on, on how water intensive of a, of a crop this is 
you mentioned before that that each of those plants you you, you said you were giving them about about a gallon a gallon a week or a gallon how often was that that is correct even though they are in the cactus family contrary to everybody's belief the dragon fruit requires a heck of a lot more water than than your cactus plant uh, remember these are subtropical uh, plants uh, you know they come places like from hawaii vietnam uh, places you know where you get uh, 200 uh, inches of rain a year uh, so uh, uh, they they do need quite a bit of water but uh, on the other hand down here i have noticed where especially like when we had this hurricane and and prior to when we had the 14 inches of rain uh, too much water just like anything else uh, will set them back so uh, okay so are they are they susceptible like if, if they're overwatered or if there's too much rain to funguses and whatnot yes uh, just like you know any other plant out there you know too much of something is is sometimes not good and and in this case uh, a, a lot of water it sets them back it doesn't kill them and then you can tell right away i did have an uh, one of my clients called me from La Feria, where uh, he has, uh, I think, approximately uh, 25 uh, plants. Uh, Ten of them were on high ground uh, with mounds, which he planted on mounds. Ten of them were on the side of the property where it was a low-lying area. And uh, it, they were in standing water for, for an entire week. And it, uh, I, it did kill those, the, the ones that were standing in standing water for really? it, was, it was a week to 10 days so he said oh. they did die on him so is there so for your so you're you're using drip you're using drip irrigation on these when are you like we have a question here from uh from from joe ramos uh, when are you watering you're doing it just just like normal you're doing it during the early hours of the morning or, or later at night uh i have my my timer set uh actually and for my dragon fruit i have them set in the middle of the day uh, I'm, I'm watering the rest of my 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 farm uh, in the early morning or late in the afternoon. So my dragon fruit, I have them set for the middle of the day. Okay. Um, we have some questions here about 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 pests, about sort of animals, birds, or or any other sort of pests, coyotes, anything like that. What are the major What are the major things to look out for, and and what approaches can you take? Uh, the major pest is the two-legged animal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, once they start fruiting, you know, you got uh, everybody and you're right. coming along. And, but no, in a serious, more serious note, every four-legged animal and every bird with wings loves dragon fruit. Uh, uh, raccoons, uh, skunks, uh, possums, mice. Uh, uh, as far as your birds are concerned, my 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 main bird is 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 uh, is the mockingbird. Uh, strangely and oddly enough, uh, my plants grow enough fruit to where uh, uh, I, I do have some damage. And just like any crop, you know, I do lose about 10% uh, to to animals. But uh, it, it's a very delicious fruit. Uh, all the animals love it. All the birds love it. And actually, the birds peck on it, and and it's almost real similar to like your 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 orange. You know, they don't really go to eat the fruit. You know, they go and peck a hole in it so that the insects can come and fly and start you know eating on your fruit. And that's when the birds come in and they actually eat the insects that are attacking your fruit. So you know, I mean, almost as far as I'm concerned, I love the birds because they're they're actually keeping my my insect control, uh, you know, by by doing that. But I do lose about 10% of the fruit to to uh, uh, possums and, and raccoons and, and birds, so forth and so on. All right, we're getting a bunch more questions here also about the best place to purchase cuttings. And so just to review before, during the Q&A, you had mentioned there are a few places that actually grow dragon fruit, very few in the valley, and that those would be, uh, if if you know those producers so we're not allowed to like necessarily promote your private farm but cruz is a private farmer and he has them and and uh that's that is outside of the context of this particular presentation otherwise cruz mentioned uh going online i i just went onto amazon and i just put in 
uh, dragon fruit cuttings and there are opportunities to purchase things on like uh, cuttings via via Amazon. So um, that that is the recommendation. If you want more specific advice, I would really recommend you contacting Cruz directly through his email, which is which, which is on the presentation right now. Um, additional questions we've got here. Uh, in, when you were tying up the plant as it's as it's sort of going up the trellis, should you avoid? This is from Carlos Medina. Should you avoid tying it off at that sort of narrowing point where where the sections are are connecting? That, that's a good question. Uh, you can tie it at any point. Uh, one thing that I do recommend is when you tie it, uh, tie it loosely because the, the plant will be growing uh, uh, and it will be getting literally fatter and fatter and fatter. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping the plant from flopping down. So when you do tie it, uh, tie it loosely, uh, the, the thorns itself will, will hold the string up and uh, it'll get to a point where the, the plant doesn't flop over. Uh, but you can tie it at, at, the, at the joining point or at the center point. It, it, it really doesn't matter. Just don't tie it super tight because then it'll start cutting the actual plant. All right, we've got a few questions here from Joseph Hogan um, and I think from Robin as well about, about fertilization. What's your approach to fertilizing your plants? Uh, initially, I start with uh, my mix, my soil mix. Uh, as far as that's concerned, I, I use the 50% topsoil, 50% uh, compost, and, and that tends uh, to last me at least a whole year. Uh, then uh, what I do is I, I amend the, the top with one inch of, of pure compost, uh, which also I purchased at McAllen Recycle Center. And, uh, but if, if you can't get a hold of that, or go over there and get it. Uh, a, a fertilizer of, of 20-20-20 is a good mix. Uh, and uh, that you would apply uh, early spring and early fall. And uh, you would uh, mix accordingly. And uh, you would probably be using, uh, once you make, let's say you have a 50 gallon mixture, or you would use probably one gallon of that mixture per plant. Uh, uh, twice, twice a year. So, um, and and I think it comes out to like like maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon of the twenty 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 per gallon. Okay. Um, so just to remind everyone, if people could, uh, we released the poll a few minutes ago. If if you haven't yet done so, please make sure to fill that out, and we're going to try to wrap up in a few minutes. Uh, but we still have a bunch of questions here. Uh, really, really good questions. Thanks everyone for the interaction. Um, so we have a couple questions here that are sort of related about soil types, the best soil types, the most appropriate soil types. And then another question that is very particular to South Texas and the Valley, which is about how close or far away from the coast do you, do you sort of need to be to be growing those? So you're in, you're in Willacy County, you're growing. About how far from the coast are you? 20 miles uh, as the crow flies. Uh, it, it is, as I mentioned, it is a subtropical plant. Uh, it will freeze. I mean, I mean, it'll, it'll withstand a two, three hour freeze, which we've gone through here over the past few years, uh, but it will not withstand a two or three day freeze uh, where let's say you go into maybe San Antonio, uh, Austin, up in those areas, uh, those, those freezes that last, uh, you know, six, eight hours will, will kill your plant. All right. Um, we have a question from Carol Brown. Um, this is, I, get, I guess she is, she is already growing. She says she gets several flowers blooming at a time, but little fruit set. Um, what, I mean, that might be a specific situation where you would need to talk, talk to that person about their, that, their circumstance. But in general, if that were happening, what might be some of the issues? What, what the, the main issue is, do you have bees uh, is, is in your neighborhood or wherever you're at? Because uh, uh, bees is one that, that pollinate early in the morning, real early in the morning. Now the, the dragon fruit blooms at about, starts blooming, the, the flower starts to open around 10 o'clock at night, okay? So between 10 o'clock and, and, and daylight, uh, the bees aren't working. They're not, they're not pollinating. The only thing that will pollinate at that time is your insects that are out at night. And basically it would be your moths. So if you have a lot of moths, 
you're in good shape. If you don't, your pollination is 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 basically what makes the fruit. So if you don't have pollination, you know you have your flower. A few days it turns yellow, and about a week uh, it falls off. So that is your main problem. Now what you can do to help that out is one thing that we used to do uh, is you get a glass jar, a, a, a one of those curd jars for canning uh, that's got maybe like a uh, three inch opening on the top, not your huge one, not your small one, the mid-sized one. And you get your jar and you shove it inside the flower. The flower is huge. And, and, and then you get your jar and you start shaking that flower very vigorously. So where that pollen starts to to fall and, and interact with the other because it's a self-pollinating flower, but uh, uh, then that itself initiates the pollination and, and more than likely nine out of 10 times you will get a set. A set. It's, it's a real nice technique. If you Google it, I, I think you'll be able to see it. If they need more information on how to do it, I, I, I can show them how, how that on a one-to-one -one basis. All right, thank you, Cruz. Uh, we're going to wrap it up in a few minutes, so I'm going to I'm going to close the I'm going to end the poll right now. Um, people will be getting a survey after this um, via by email because you registered with us. Um, Want to make sure that we that we wrap up all the major questions. Some of the I'd like to shout out Christopher Gabler, who's actually answering some of the questions in the Q and A section. So thank you, Christopher. Um, and it's back to that to that coastal. To, to people that are really close to the to the coast air, coastal areas and the salinity either in the soil or or in the air does it have a really detrimental effect on the on the plant uh i couldn't answer as far as uh, the salinity uh, part of it uh, but it it will tolerate uh, salt uh, i do have a colleague of mine where you know he, he has uh, salty salty uh, a high content salt and the pitayas grows very well there. So uh, how much will it tolerate? Uh, I couldn't answer right. that. Right. I guess it's a small sample size, right? So we only know, we only know what we know. Um, mm -hmm. From uh, Odilia Garcia, is it, is it hard or impossible to grow from seed? Is that even a thing? Are people growing these from seed? Uh, personally, I've never tried it, but it is possible. Uh, it just, uh, you know, it just takes forever, uh, a lot of care. Uh, it can be done. Uh, a lot of people do it. Uh, it's a lot. It's a cheaper route to go. Uh, you can uh, order the seeds uh, 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 via Amazon or wherever and get them in, and, and you almost get a more of a variety uh, 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 that you can choose from through seeds than from actual cuttings. Right. Right. So talking about about varieties a little bit, I think you mentioned that that you're growing a variety called physical graffiti. That's correct. So, so there is a variety named after a Led Zeppelin album. I just, I just wanted to point that out. That's fantastic. That makes me very excited. Um, other questions about spacing between plants. Generally, how far away are your plants on your plot there? Uh, the rows are 10 foot. Uh, these, uh, and, and from plant to plant, uh, I believe I have uh, eight foot. Uh, the reason for that is these plants uh, umbrella out and they take up a lot of space. And the reason you want to really space them out is, is one, uh, for you to harvest, you know, you're able to walk in there and not, you know, get, you know, thorns all over you from the other plants. Uh, and two, when maintenance, uh, you know, I'm able to go in with a riding mower and, and, and cut the grass on, on you know, 90% of the, of the plot uh, versus, you know, going in there with a weed eater and, and trying to maintain the plot. So uh, very, very important that you space them out. All right. Um, there's only a few more questions here. Uh, there's a question on on how you're separating the plant at the top, and I think you mentioned that you're doing that by hand, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, you don't want uh, your your the plant that's on the north uh, side of your post growing to to the south side. Basically, what you do is when it comes out, you just want it to umbrella out uh, to or lean out uh, to to that particular side of that plant uh, that you where you planted it and for uh, so there are some people I, I think who planted them maybe close to a tree or close to their house and then it sort of trellised up up those the, those items and now they're they're actually fruiting 
at a really high, uh, at, at, a, at a significant height. If they cut them back, will like they'll just sort of start start from scratch, right? Yes, yes. And and mind you, uh, when I went to Hawaii a few years ago, if you don't prune them, uh, these things uh, are actually growing as high and as tall as uh, they go up a coconut tree. So you know they'll grow 25, 30, 30 feet tall, and you know you'll see a coconut tree with coconuts and and dragon fruit uh, coming out of the top. So yeah. All right. I think those are the major those are the major questions people had. Um, we're gonna wrap it up for now. Um, thanks everyone for participating. We had a really good group of uh, of attendees uh, for our, for our first session this week, and uh, the content was really good. Cruz, thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to, to everyone joining us next week. Thank you, Colin, and thanks everyone for joining. Yeah, everyone stay, stay safe out there.